The name's Crush. Funky Crush. <laughs> Spinning. Hey, DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. And yes, from the thumbnail and the description and the cold open, you can guess I'm going to be doing something from our friend Nick Crush today. Uh, I've been talking to him a little bit, and uh, we'll get into that in a second. I, I'm in a Discord right now uh, with him and Clint from Blitz, and uh, Seabass is in there, uh, Bedanz is in there. He doesn't talk a lot, but he does, and when he does, it's awesome. Mikey from Overthrow's in there, Nick Carroll's in there. So it's a bunch of the, the new and upcoming uh, YouTuber coaches. Uh, you've seen Blitz, uh, no doubt, with uh, Robbie C. And I think he was on Broderick uh, as well, his channel on a couple videos. So a couple of the up and coming uh, YouTube coaches. I, I'm still getting coached by Josh from Overthrow. Nothing's gonna usurp that. But I wanna be a student of the game. And I want to learn as much as I can from as many people as I can, or at least be exposed to as much information as I can to start determining what is going to be working for me and what's worthwhile in my game and then communicate it outward uh, again and again. I think the tighter we can get this community and the more in line and lockstep we can get for, with the information, the better for the disc golf world. Uh, and that's what I'm all about, promoting disc golf and building uh, disc golf. So I'm gonna do as much as I can to work with uh, these YouTubers, these coaches, um, to get this information out and, and really just um, vet it. Vet the info, put it to use, see uh, what's worthwhile and what's wor what's not worthwhile and and just get it out there and 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 help everybody to to grow in the sport so let's get into it again uh, i've been talking a little bit with nick about his demystifying the brace series uh, i'll link the one that i'm going to reference specifically in this video i'll link up here it, it's a three-part video the last part is his application but don't dismiss the first two i'm i'm not a really it, super intelligent guy and there's some things that he says that goes over my head but to really put his third video in context you need to watch the first two so i would t spend the time to watch all three but what i'm going to be going over specifically in this video and then the upcoming videos is his evolution cycle uh to put into practice his theories about the brace all right let's start getting into this so my intention here is just to show you how i'm implementing evolution one from nick remember there's three evolutions there's the standstill right which inco incorporates the butt wipe uh from sea bass there is the he does a crow hop i i do a sort of a mini x step uh that's evolution two and then the full walk up into run up that's evolution three so this video is going to be concentrating just on evolution one i've been doing this for probably the past five days i figured after my last video, I better do a video of field work and not just throwing into a net. So, and I have confirmed that his last name is actually Crush, which is absolutely fantastic. And if my last name was Crush, the cold open is how I would introduce myself to everyone because yes, I am still childish. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is go over this evolution one and hit on some points that have helped me incorporate this drill and get better use of it. Like Nick communicated with us how he incorporates it. I took his rendition of Evolution 1 and, and applied it to me and, and how I think. And there's some differences of, of points that I have to have in order for me to get the most out of his drill. So let's get into those. All right, point number one, and this is the overarching theme, the mindset that I have to take into this drill sequence. Uh, it is mind-body connection. That's what I'm trying to build here. Mind-muscle connection, mind-body connection. Everything hinges on that. I have to be intentional. I have to be detailed. I have to be deliberate. I have to be direct. I can't just go through the motions here. I have to connect my mind to what I want my body to do. So everything else that we talk about today is hinged on that overarching guideline and concept of mind-body connection. Be deliberate and intentional when you do your drills. Don't just go through the motion. Point number two, this is a lower body drill. Upper body does not 
matter. I have to keep that conscious in my thought. I need to be stay relaxed and centered and balanced in my upper body, but not tight and tense and forcing my upper body because this is all about the lower body movement. And when Nick goes through it, he shows you, keep your head, keep your body back. Don't drive into it. Don't try to crank around on it. This is just nice, fluid upper, fluid upper body movement. It's all about getting the lower body to do what you want it to do. All right, and the last couple of points here are all gonna be about us incorporating the first step in evolution one, right? There's three steps to evolution one. It's the standstill with nothing in my hand, right? And then it's the standstill with the towel, and then it's a standstill with the discs. Three st steps to evolution one. I'm gonna spend almost all my time on step one and then may show you a little bit of step two and a, and a little bit of, of step three. Step three looks awful still. I've been doing this, like I said, for the past five days or so, and I still think it looks terrible. <laughs> so don't judge me on what it looks like, judge me on what I'm telling you. And as I go through this and progress, hopefully it gets better and better. I'm gonna spend a ton of time on this because I think this foundation is very, very important to maintaining and sustaining this in your actual throw. Just a refresher, hopefully you went back and watched Nick's video about Evolution One. It's getting your, your stance about 125%. He, I said, he said, I think, of your shoulder width. Staggered stance, right? So where your target line is running to the heel of your front foot and the toe of your rear foot. Nice athletic stance. And you wanna make sure that you're, you're, you're in a good posture to shift your weight back and forth. You should feel the pressure on the inside balls of your feet as you go. So. The first thing that I need to focus on in this, uh, and he tells you, you know, just do the butt wipe drill. Keep your, keep your upper body quiet, right? Relaxed, and you're moving your hip. You're, 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 you're doing the sea bass butt wipe drill and getting this front hip over and into your plant. Uh, the trigger, the cue for me is feeling pressure in this hip joint as I get over that plant. I'll really feel it right here if I'm doing it right. And the intention is to get weightless, for me anyway, to get weightless from my back foot. I push off of it, but I get weightless from my back foot and really feel, really feel that front hip driving into the plant. But that plant really needs to stop your momentum and you'll feel it right here in your front hip. And that's my cue that I know I'm getting my weight forward effectively when I feel it right here in this hip, this adductor, I think it's adductor. It's one of the two, abductor or adductor. Anyway, so that's point number one for the standstill. All right, so point number two for the standstill is really using the ground to force rotation and not rotating into the plant. There's a very big dis differentiation between those two things that I think we confuse as amateurs a lot. We rotate into the plant and not use the plant to rotate. That's what this drill is supposed to stop. And it looks like if I'm rotating into the plant, as I'm coming forward, my, my hips are shifting into the plant, right? And that's me rotating into the plant. Me using the plant to rotate is doing what this drill is to do and to shift that butt cheek forward and then pushing against the ground to turn it away. Right, to clear it out of the way is the terminology that we use. It's delayed and, it, it, and you need to, I need to exaggerate it. So it, to tell you the truth, in order for me to do this correctly, so if you go back and watch Nick's drill, you'll see his knee is bent when he's going forward. And as he's turning, you'll see that knee slightly extend, right? I, I, I'm not gonna say he locks it out, but he does extend it into, so, and I think that is intentional by him and something he doesn't really go into, but for me, I need to exaggerate that movement, that pushing away. So I like to go, especially when I first start this, I like to go in with a really bent knee and then exaggerate the extension and pushing away. So again, mind-body connection, my mind needs to know what my body needs to do. So I go in and I push away, I go in, and I push away, incorporate the reach back, swipe forward, push away, okay? And again, this adductor, I, I, I feel it now. It, it should be burning, it should be sore. As you do, if you do this right, 
This outside part of your hip should be sore. You should feel not a bad soreness, but you know, feel the burn. That's what you feel, okay? So exaggerated movements are important for me as I develop my mind-body connection into this drill, into these sequence of drills. Use the ground to push the hip away and force rotation so the brace causes rotation. We don't rotate into the brace. All right, I'm gonna get into step two, but I really, really wanna make clear that that first part is really foundational and you really need to establish that in your brain, in that connection, in order for you to be able to do the next two steps correctly. And as you go through these next two steps, and I'll tell you what helps me, is there will come a point when I get into these next two steps where I lose that feeling of bracing and pushing and turning my hips, uh, turning this hip out, I lose that. So what I'll do is I'll drop what I'm doing, go back to the standstill, and get the feel again. And just do this a couple of times to get that feeling again and then get back into whatever I was doing. I think that's important to really constantly reiterate the, ba the basis, the foundation of the brace as we're progressing and becoming more elaborate and adding more pieces to the puzzle. Okay, so a couple of pointers, actually just one big pointer on the towel step is making sure that you feel the plant and the push before you hear the towel. Like you have a physical and an audible cue in this drill to me, right? And if I am hearing the towel before I land that plant, my timing is wrong and I'm training my body wrong. I need to feel the plant, and again, exaggerate it at, at, at beginning. Turn and then fire the arm. Because I need to feel the turn before I hear the towel. All right, to me, that's the cue. Feel the tension in the hip, feel the rotation, hear the towel. That's the way it needs to be. I can't hear the towel and feel the rotation at the same time. I need to feel the rotation and then hear the towel. So that's really the, the one thing that I wanna bring up with step two. Two things I wanna bring up about step three with the disc is go through the shadow throws, like Nick says, and you hear what I'm doing? I'm holding the disc like this and using it as like the towel for the first couple. Okay, to get that feel, hear, cue uh, in order with the disc and not the towel. So to me, that's important to sort of link step two and step three is to get that feel here, okay? Feel here. The second thing is, he says this in his video and I'll just reiterate this because I think it's very important for this drill sequence. Don't worry about the, where the disc goes or how it flies. We're not worried about us hitting our line. We're not worried about us hitting our angles. This is all about using our lower body to generate power. That's all it's about. And it is with torque and timing. Two T's, torque and timing. Uh, both of those are critical in this sequence, okay? So I'm gonna go through and do two of those and then let one rip. Now, you'll notice that I didn't really, Nick, he's been doing it for a while, so he's, he really follows through and gets a whip around. I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm still at probably like 50% doing these and really learning how to do it correctly before I go all out. Um, so there you have it. I mean, that's it. That's, that's how I'm incorporating his evolution uh, cycle for the brace. I really appreciate Nick and all he does and the thoughtfulness he puts into his videos and into his movements. He just doesn't throw stuff out there. He's a really intelligent guy and he really puts a lot of thought into him. So thanks Nick for all you do. How did I do? Critique me, Nick. Uh, critique me, YouTube. <laughs> uh, I hope this helped. I hope this gave you some pointers into how to incorporate these drills into your 
uh, into your routine and I hope they help you out at, like they've been helping me out. I can, I can tell you that this is going to help. Uh, thanks for your support as always. It's been a, it's been, it's been a blast. I, I'm having a great time and I have a great time meeting new people, uh, meeting new people that watch me on the course. That's always, but you know, getting to interact with these coaches online, I can't tell you what a privilege and is an honor it is to me to be able to talk to these guys who are so thoughtful and good and good for the game. Honestly, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a snail in the midst of giants. Um, but I'm soaking it all in and loving every second of it. So thanks again for all your support. Hope this helped. Until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.